right here under homework assignment three, the right here, the MPU 9250 documents. That's what we're doing in exercise three. We're setting up the MPU 9250 and we are um, reading from it, the gyro readings, the accelerometer readings, and actually we're gonna read this temperature sensor that personally I've never played with. I, I've never seen it move, the temperature sensor inside there. So I don't even know if it works, but I'm probably doing something wrong with it. I've never played with it. But anyway, we're gonna read that temperature sensor because it's just easier and I'll explain why hopefully here. All right, this right here, the addendum and examples. This is definitely the document you wanna look at because I give you a lot of the code. Um, the only issue with this silly document is I've got to figure out how to zoom in on my plots. Oh, now let's go back one. The text of my plots down here. So that's the only thing I'm disappointed in this document. I put a little bit of the data sheet there, but the most important part, well, this is also remembering that there's a read write bit in the first eight bits you send over to the MPU 9250, whether you wanna read or write from the device or to the device, so that's important. But then down here are these diagrams, okay? And my text is super tiny, so make sure if you zoom in, you can see that text. Uh, sorry about that. But anyway, I give an example of how to write to one register of the MPU 9250. I also go down here and give you an example of how to re uh, sorry write to multiple and what how many do i do down here i write to three okay and then i say or you could write to five or seven i'm going to explain hopefully in just a second why it's not the best idea to write to two registers or four or six okay it's always an odd number of registers when around 10 i'll explain i'll explain um <clears throat> And it's mainly because we're using 16 bits to transfer our data instead of eight. Uh, and then down here, I give an example of reading one. Now, notice this device, the MPU 9250, we, we are gonna, the way we're gonna use it is we're only gonna write to the MPU 9250 in main in our initialization function called init SPIB. Okay, you're creating that function in um, problem number five, okay? And so if you notice in my example code here, we do not use interrupts for the writing to the device. I guess we could come up with a scenario where we need to write to the device uh, other times, but in what we're gonna be using it for, we will not need to. So notice here, well, let's even, let's go look what I do when I write three. So the code down here, little snippet, no, notice what it does. This is all happening in main, no interrupts. And so what we need to do is we first need to pull chip select low. Remember the 9250 is an SPI device and to talk to it, the GPIO 66 is connected to the chip select. So the first thing you gotta do is pull it low saying, hey, turn on or hell, wake up. I got some data to send to you. That's what you're saying by pulling that low. Then remember, the transmit buffer is a FIFO. Do you remember that? And so when we write to the transmit buffer, one thing it gets put on the FIFO, and then we write a second thing, then that, that thing gets put on the FIFO also, right? Then the bottom one shifts out the serial port, the other one chunks down, waits for it to be done. When this 16 bits has been sent out, the next 16 bits gets sent out, doesn't it? And then what we always remember is with SPI, when we write data, we're also reading data. Now in this case, it's gonna be garbage because the MP9250 does not send back any data. Remember the read write bit? When the write bit is set to low, I think it is, yeah, low, we just write out data. We have to read, but just because of the way the SPI works, but what we're reading has no importance. Okay, so look what I do here. This is again, a loop in, not a loop, a chunk of code in main. And so I write out this 1913, right? So remember, I, uh, I don't know if it's uh, explanatory, let's see here. So remember what, this OX1900 ORD with OX0013 is the hex number OX1913, isn't it? Okay, anyway, so we're sending out that 16 bits and then we're also sending out the 16 bits to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. okay? So 
we put those two things into the FIFO, and then what are we doing here? We're waiting, whiling on when uh, <clears throat> the receive FIFO status, the receive FIFO status tells us how many 16-bit words are sitting in the receive FIFO. Okay? So since we transmitted out two 16-bit words, we're going to receive in two 16-bit words, and so we're waiting for that to be two. If we did not, why are we waiting for that? If we did not wait for it to be two, we would pull chip select high too soon. And if chip select goes high too soon, the chip turns off and no data comes back. Or well, no data goes forward either. Okay? Anyway, all right. Well, the data would go forward, but the chip wouldn't read it. How about that? That's a better way to say it. So we wait for there to be two things in the receive FIFO. Then we pull chip select high. Okay. Finally, just so that the receive FIFO status goes back down to zero, because again, that's garbage data, we've got to read the receive FIFO twice. The receive buffer, boom, boom, we get it off. Okay, And then uh, that command has occurred. Okay. Now, when we read this device, we could actually, if we wanted to, we could read the device this way also with uh, polling. This is what's called polling for a status, right? But we want to, in our normal code, we want to take advantage of the interrupt of the SPI. So you're going to see in my read code down here in the example. <clears throat> All right, well, let's do let's do multiple bytes just to make it a little more. You can you can read the one byte transfer, but. Now, what we've got to do is we've got to use two areas of code. So notice, and I can't remember what uh, CPU timer I tell you to use in the homework, but the CPU timer that's happening every millisecond, okay, what are we going to do inside there? Well, when we're ready to talk to the SPI, which is every millisecond, every time in there, we're going to clear chip select. Makes sense, right? Then we're going to set the receive FIFO interrupt level. That's what that RXFFIL stands for right here. See the RXFILL? -L? All right. We are sending it what? Well, this right here, 3C, is the register address we want to talk to. What, what is that one? Let's just look real quick. Oops, yeah, let's go over here. 3C happens to be, this is just an example, but let's see what it is. So if I go to, uh, sorry, homeworks, go down here, I should have had this ready. Homework 3 and the registers data sheet, right? Remember this crazy thing? So we got all these registers. And 3C happens to be right here, Excel X out low. Okay? So that right, see here, 3C. So for, for some reason, and I'm going to explain why, for some reason we're reading Excel X out low first for this example. Okay, And how do we know we're reading? If we go back to that, we know we're reading but because we're setting the most significant bit high here. Do you agree? Hex 8, right, is 0, 0, 0, 1, right? So hex 8,000 in binary is four zeros, four zeros, four zeros, and then 0, 0, 0, 1. Agree with that? So that is the 16th, well, 15th bit when you start zero as you're counting. So that's bit 15 is set high. When you OR that with 3C, now you are asking the device, hey, I want to read the value at that register. Right? That's that read write bit. Okay, good. And then, now again, this device, the MPU-9250, when we're reading data, the only thing that's important when we're writing over is the address that we want to read from. Then we can send whatever we want the next eight bits. In this case, I'm sending zero. And then the next 16 bits I'm sending, I'm sending 16 zeros. And then the next 16 bits I'm sending, I'm sending another 16, bit ze 16 zeros. In other words, I'm sending something. It could be anything. We could do all ones. We could do one zero one zero one zero. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. So uh, we send that across. Now that's all that happens inside the timer. 
So in other words, you've pulled chip select low, you've said, hey, SPI, cause an interrupt when there's three things sitting on the receive FIFO, three 16-bit values, and then we shove those three things, shove three things out, and then we exit. We don't do anything until all that data's been shifted out, and then, of course, data's been shifted in, and then we get into the SPIB ISR right here, okay? So that's what this guy is in this example, right? And you'll have this here. <clears throat> what do we do when we come into the SPIB ISR? First thing, we know we've transmitted out those uh, three 16-bit words. So that also means we've received in. I know I repeat that all the time, but that's something to get in your head. We've also received in 16 bits. So we're done with the chip. Let's pull chip select high. See that? And that's what we're doing with GPIO 66. It's pulling high. Then the first 16 bits, and I'm going to explain why in just a second, is dummy data. We don't care about the first 16 bits. But the next 16 bits is actually your full acceleration Y value. You guys remember last week, or yeah, I'll call it last week, um, when you read just the gyro, right? We, we made, gave you all the code for just reading one of the axes of the gyro. When you rotated it, do you remember what number you got? You got a number between minus 32,767 and pot. Oh, sorry, 768 and positive 32,767. In other words, a signed 16-bit number. Kind of remember that? Let's get it back in our brains, right? Well, that's exactly what I mean by this raw acceleration. Okay, so this is giving us a number between uh, minus 32,000 to positive 32,000 and cash, right? <laughs> and then change, I should say. Uh, anyway, and so in this case, we're reading Excel Y and Excel Z. So in other words, I'm almost giving you the whole answer right here. Not quite, because what do we want to do in your final version of code for, lab, uh, for exercise five? We want to read seven things, seven 16-bit values, okay? And that's Excel X, raw value, Excel Y, Excel Z, this temperature sensor, and then gyro X, gyro Y, gyro Z. Okay? All right. So almost all your code's sitting here, but not quite. I want you to think it through. Okay, good. But then, of course, then the simple things, when we get uh, that raw Y and Z value, then we convert it to a value in G's. All right? It happens to be that we're going to set it up so that the max reading is plus 4 G's. Uh, then in the negative direction, it's minus 4 G's. Okay, um, and then we acknowledge the interrupt and we're done. And that happens every millisecond. You go out and read that device then from that on, then on every millisecond. Okay, what do you think? All right, now let's explain why I say up here that you can read, I mean, well, you could do a lot of different things. You do not. For the homework, you do have to do it the way I say in the homework. But you could read this guy a different way. But I'm not even gonna explain that different way so you don't get confused. But what do I say here? Do I say in this? Yeah, I say read from two, three, four, yeah, okay. Anyway, I'll, I'll explain that, yeah. You can read as many 16-bit words as you want after that. So, the question is, what address do you read first? Okay, now notice what we were doing. This example was asking us to read, what do I say here? Do I say what we're actually reading? Excel Y and Excel Z. Okay, so I want to read the whole Excel Y value and the entire Excel Z value. But why, look what I do, let's go to that register map again. What I'm saying here with this example is I want to read, let's go in again, plus in. I'm in this example for some reason reading Excel X out low first, 3C. You may ask, Dan, if you're just wanting to read Excel Y high, the high byte, right? So in other words, 
This register map is every, every eight bits of what we're looking at, okay? But the full reading for the accelerometer is 16 bits, okay? So again, I say, you know, and I, I give you the exercise. I want you to read Excel Y and Excel Z. Your first thought when you look at this, my first, first thought when I looked at this device is, well, I would read what? 3D first. Do you agree with that? Kind of, right? You see 3D is Excel Y out high. But let's think about if we did it that way. So, look what happens if I go to my diagram. My drawing, come on, there you go. Excel, remember we have this. Uh, OX 3D is Excel Y high byte. Just say H. OX3E is Excel Y low byte. OX3F is Excel Z high. And OX40 is Excel Z low. Did I do that right? Let's double check it. Make sure I wrote that down right. Uh, yep. Right there, right? So high and lows. Good. All right. Now. Think about what would happen if we read this guy first. Remember, what do we have to send across? It, 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 and the part of this is because I'm taking advantage of the capability of this SPI that it can write 16 bits at a time and read 16 bits at a time. If we were using our UART, and you'll see this uh, when, we, like, when we're communicating the Raspberry Pi, we're going to use the UART a UART can only transmit eight bits at a time, okay? Or what we think in terms of eight-bit chunks when, you talk, when you're talking about the Raspberry Pi and the UART. Here with the SPI, we can take advantage and get a little faster communication and think in 16-bit chunks. So we're just taking advantage. We could change this. We could change this and read and write in just eight-bit chunks. It just would be a little slower. Okay, anyway, so... Um, I want to use 16 bits. So if we did this, what would we have to do? So when, if we want to read 3D, that register, we would then put into uh, SPI transmit buff. The first thing we would read, put in there as 16 bits would be what? It would be set equal to O. Now, what is OX3D or with OX80 to set the read bit, right? Well, just think about it. D is 1011, 3 is 1100. Okay? So to, this is the read write bit, this guy right here. If we want that to be 1, that's the, what this ORing with hex 80 is doing. You guys, see that? 80, remember, hex 80 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. All right? So that's not the solution. But anyway, you solution this down. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. So you could just write that this is equal to OX. This is B. B3. And then 0, 0 because we want to do 16-bit transfer. You see that? What's kind of that? Think about that a little bit. But that's what we want to write over first. Yeah. BD, thank you. I don't know where I got the three. Thank you. It's 3D. Yeah, thank you. I was doing the front end, wasn't I? BD is what you had sent. Okay? And then zero, zero for the next. Okay. We still need to get... So that's giving us back Excel Y high. If we write out another 16 bits... We would just say zero, 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 zero. That's another, just transfer because we want to read back. And then, so that would give us these two, wouldn't it? And then finally, we're going to get this and then actually the next register, aren't we? So SPI TX buff equals OX zero, 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 zero. Okay, now look what happens if we do that. We get back. So now, then we, in our interrupt, in the SPI B interrupt, 
what do we get back now? We get, when we read, we're going to uh, SPI uh, value 1 is equal to SPI receive buff. SPI value 2 equals the receive buff. SPI value 3 equals the SPI receive buff. See what I'm doing? I'm reading those three things off. Now, look what's happened. What do we have? In SPI value 1, we have in our 16 bits, the upper 8 bits is garbage. Nothing comes back. Garbage. There we go. Um, nothing comes back when we're sending over the BD. But what do we have next? This is Excel... Uh, what? Y high. It's sitting in its own spot here. Then what do we have in SPI value 2? We've got Excel Y low and Excel, is it Z? Yeah, Z high. And then in SPI, ooh, SPI value 3, we have Excel Z low, and then, well, garbage to us, it's actually, uh, what, temperature high, I think it is. Temperature uh, um, high, which we don't care about. So now what do we gotta do? To put together Excel uh, Y, we have it in two spots, don't we? So we would have to say Excel y raw you can do it this would be a way to do it i'm not going to approve it for the homework but what would we have to do we'd have to say spi raw is equal to spi value one left shifted eight see what i'm doing i'm moving excel y up high and then we'd or that with <laughs> spi value two right shifted eight because we got to get the Excel Y down in the bottom, don't we, to OR it. Do you see what I'm doing? So we got all this bit manipulation we have to do. We'd have to do the same thing for Excel Z raw. Same thing, right? We'd have SPI value uh, what? Yeah, same thing. SPI value 2, left shifted 8, or with SPI value 3, right shifted 8. Okay, how did I get around? Anybody say how I got around doing this in the example? What did I read first? What was that? I read one byte ahead, don't I, and ignore it. You see what I did? So in the example, instead I changed this and I sent out SPI, uh, Let's do it right. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. SPI transmit buffer, SPI TX buff, I said equal to O, X, what is it? B, C, zero, zero. Then I sent out, I'm gonna be abbrevi ab abbreviate here a little bit. Then I sent out zero. Then I sent out zero. Okay, and so now what I get back, SPI value one equals SPI receive buff. And then at value two, same thing, question, not question mark, double, double, three equals, right, the same thing. I read from it three times. Now what do I have? I have SPI value one, what's in it? Well, again, that first byte, when you're sending across BC, it come, nothing comes back, garbage. So garbage. Then the next chunk in that though is uh, Excel X low. Okay. Then next, SPI value two is equal to Excel Y high ORD with, or what, not ORD with, just also in there, so this isn't an or, 
This is a two parts, the two bytes is what I'm trying to show there. Uh, and then also Excel Y low. And SPI value three is equal to Excel Z high. Excel Z low. Boom, this value, we don't have to do any of this bit shifting, do we? None of this is necessary now. That when we read SPI value two, it's the entire Excel Y. When we read SPI value three, it's the entire Excel Z. What do you think? Okay, so what do we wanna do in la on exercise five? We want to read Excel X high and low, Excel Y high and low, Excel Z high and low, temperature out high and low, gyro X high and low, gyro Y high and low, gyro Z high and low. So what register to do that, what register are you gonna read first besides you two? What right, yeah. We are gonna read int status first. And are we, do we care what int status is? Nope. We're gonna read it and throw it away. But then the next 16 bits we read, boom, it's gonna have the full Excel X. And then Excel Y, boom, down. Okay? Good, good, yeah. Uh-huh. So the first thing you have to send, how we get that is we sent over, in my example, I sent over 3C first, right? That's saying, you send it to this device. You could, another way to do it, you could do it this way. We're not going to, but you could send over 3C and then set that read bit and then zero, zero, and that's it. Okay? And if you just sent that over, you would just read the eight bits that's sitting at 3C. So the protocol, it's just, it's, if you look at the data sheet, you have this. So what you have to do is what the, the data sheet shows, or my addendum shows. So right here, and let's zoom in, let's see if we can see this, this crazy text. So plus, plus. This is just happens to be the protocol. Right here, when you send, see, can you read that BC start address? BC means, B means that the read bit set. Okay, and then 3C part of that is that I wanna read register 3C. When you send over the BC, nothing comes back. It's garbage right here, nothing of importance. That's just the way the protocol works for this chip. They could have changed it. They could have sent something back of good information there. But they didn't, they didn't choose to do that, okay? What, the next eight bits that come back after you send over an address is the value at BC. Why do we have to send zeros? Because with SPI, you've gotta send something to receive something. So that's why we send zero. We could have put in there DA for Dan, if you wanna do that. You can, you can, you can encrypt, or you can, you can spell out dead, right? D-E-A-D -E if you wanted to, all right? Because those are all hex digits, aren't they? So I do that sometimes, it's kind of fun. But anyway, um, you can spell out little things with hex digits. No, that's silly. We're, we just send something, why don't you just send zero? Okay, good, good, good. All right, let's see, okay, five minutes. All right, good, I'm not doing too bad today. All right, let's see, the last thing, the definitely thing I wanna talk about now, yeah, the same thing happens when we're writing. So what I wanna show you here, let's go, so the code you're gonna cut and paste. If, if I give you all, so you're gonna cut and paste and set up your S, set up SPIB register. So now, now we're back to before interrupts are enabled, okay? This whole thing with reading we're doing at an interrupt rate, right, every millisecond. Here in main, we're only setting up the chip once. That's all we have to do. Every time we power on, we've got to set up the chip to work the way we want it to, the MPU-9250. 
So this is code in your setup SPIB function. When you come down here, I give you, you know, steps, what to do, cut and paste, and then step two. I want you to write zero to hex 13. You can go look at the register map and see what hex 13 is, what register it is, and understand, okay, Dan wants me to set that to zero. Okay, whatever. We can look at that. And then the address hex 14, zero. I'm going to set hex 15, zero. What I want to show you, this is not, this is what you will not do. You will not do the following. You won't just say, um, let's go find it. Let's get me a, where is my right transmit buff? Right here. From C. This is not what you want to do. I want you to think about this. Control V. Because notice, notice, let's go down here again. Remember that the example here? So the, this what when down here, the code I've given you. Notice I pull chip select low, I send over hex 3801, and then I wait for that one 16-bit value to get transmitted. And then I pull chip select high and then I read the garbage off the SPI buffer. The receive buffer. What am I doing here? I'm saying I want to put one at address 38, the register 38 inside the MPU 9250. Okay, so that's codes given to you. What I'm saying up here is you could, and we're, I, this is not what I'm asking you for, you could take this whole chunk of code right here. Ah, uh, where's it at? Ah, well, right here. You could take this chunk of code, put it up there, and just change the 78 to 13. Okay, and do one byte at a time. What I want you to do for your checkoff is I want you to do multiple bytes at a time in this chunk of data. So in other words, what you're not gonna do is this for, for 14. That. This is the wrong home, control C. This one you'd write to the transmit buffer. 13,500 hex. Oops. Good. And then for this one, and control V, put 1,500 hex. Control V, 1,600 hex. This is no, 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 no. Okay? This is not how we do this. I want you to think about this. Instead, remember that we need, can just send one address hex 13. And as long as we keep chip select low, you send over hex 13, the next byte you send, send goes into hex 13. The next eight bits you send, did I say eight bytes? Sorry. You send over hex 13, the address, eight bits. Then the next eight bits you send go into hex 13's address. The next eight bits you send goes into hex 14's address. Right? It's registered. Then 15. Then 16. You see what's going on there? Okay, so you only have to write the address once per chip select low. So what you're going to find is you're going to send over hex. This is correct, actually. This is the right start. This is the right start. Okay. But now you don't, in the next 16 bits that you send over, this is sending hex 13 to zero, but we don't have to send the 14. So all we have to do, the next eight 16 bits is zero, 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 because that'll send zero, zero to hex 14 and zero, zero to hex 15. And, and then we continue. Uh, and then so let's see, 17 and 18 are zero, zero. So you send zero, 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 zero. And I may be off by a, let's see, you double check here. And then the next one is 0013 or 1300, I can't remember. But you, you look at that. Hold on, hold on one second. The last thing I want you to see is that at the bottom of this function, and you'll look at the data sheet on this, you are going to, right here, the last six registers, 7E, 7D, 7B, 7A, and 7, uh, 8, 7, 8, and 7, 7 are these offsets for the accelerometer. Each of these chips, whenever they get soldered to the board, their Excel offsets are slightly different from every chip, and it has to do with how it's soldered. Okay? So when 
every one of your boards is going to have different offsets there. And you're going to have to find the offset that brings your acceleration readings down to zero at rest. And you'll have to think about that a little bit on how you do it. Read that register, those last registers, and play around with the offset. Okay, now I'm done.